I just want to say something to somebody this morning. I just want to encourage somebody a little bit more that if you ever doubt God, you are doubting yourself. You're like doubting Thomas. Don't ever doubt God. Don't doubt God. Don't doubt him. Don't doubt him because he promised that he will be there. He promised that he will be by your side. He promised that he will sustain. He promised that he will keep. And I know sometimes you're going through something and it's not clear and you're, you're in quicksand and it's like, God, where are you? Who is going to be by my side? But the word said, if you speak, speak to it. He asks Ezekiel, can these dry bones live? Right? And you got to have the tenacity to say yes. Even when you take the doubt away. Take the doubt away and he will do it. He will bless you. He will keep his word. He is a promise keeper. He is a promise keeper. He has to. He has to keep his promise. He has to keep his promise. He has to. That's how your relationship and his will get stronger because if he keeps his if he's if he keeps his promise keeps his promise you will no longer doubt him right you will no longer live in disbelief right or lack or let your faith be wavered right but he is a promise keeper so i just want to encourage somebody that whatever you're going through whatever you're trusting god for just know that he will come through if you're seeking him diligently earnestly just over the top just giving it your all just like how you give your all to those things that fail you proverbs 3 5 and 6 said trust in the lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding don't lean on what your mind is telling you don't lean on the things that you see is quaking around you or you know, deteriorating around you, you know, and verse six, in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he will direct thy path. <laughs> Jesus, acknowledge him. So I just want to encourage somebody this morning to trust the Lord, trust him despite of what, trust him the very last second that you have, trust him the very last hour, he will show up. But in that time when you're trusting God, glorify God. Do it like you know that he has already done it. Rejoice, praise, glorify, worship like he has already answered you. Whatever you're trusting him for, it's already accomplished. It is already a manifest in your life. It already come forward. The call, the answers that you need, right? The turnaround, right? The stranger to bless you. He already provided. He sent them on their way. Trust him. Don't be like doubting Thomas. <laughs> Trust the Lord. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust him with all your heart. With all your heart. Trust him. Because he will come forward. He will come. Once he know that you trust in him with this. Lord, I have nothing else. This is what I have. I give all of this. So I know you're not going to fail me, Lord. I'm giving you all my heart. Despite what I'm, despite me standing in quicksand, despite me standing in doubt, trust him. Despite me not seeing how this is going to turn around for me, how this is going to be working my favor, but I'm trusting you that you're going to deliver, that you're going to deliver, liberate me. I'm trusting you that you're going to send my helpmate. I'm trusting you that this thing is going to work for my good. I'm trusting you that this sickness I am healed from. Because you said by your stripes, I am healed. Jehovah Rapha, you are a healer. I'm trusting you for my children. That they will behave, that they will grow up. To be a woman and man of God. They will walk after your heart. I'm trusting you to heal this heartbreak. I'm trusting you. Trust God this morning. I don't know who, where you are. 
what I'm asking you. Just go on your knees. And in the time frame that you're trusting and that you're waiting, God, Lord. And if you have a time frame, like, Lord, this is what's arise against me. This is what I'm in. This is what's come up against me. This is what's happening. But I'm trusting you, Lord. That I, I know people say don't put a time frame on God. But I put a time on God, especially when I need something immediately. And I know that only him alone can give me this supernatural favor. You can't put a time frame on God because he's supernatural. Yeah? So don't believe the mass when they say don't put a time frame on God. God work in time. So why couldn't you put a time frame on someone that work in time? Time is in his hands. Right? But if he knows that you need something and the time is coming up, there's a deadline for what you need, he's going to give it to you. He's going to manifest. That's it. That's the that's the dynamic of who God is. He's majestic in all his ways. So Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, lean not on thine own understanding, but give it to the Lord, whatever you're trusting him for. Just give it over to God. Like, Lord, I don't see a way, but I'm trusting you that you will deliver me out of this, that you will make a way for me because you are the way maker. Be deliberate, Lord. Be deliberate in my life. And show me, oh God. Show me that you hear me. Show me. Let me see. Because this I need your help with. This I need recovery from. This I need a turn around. This I need a breakthrough. And no one else can help me, Lord. So I'm giving it to you. I'm calling on the Most High God. Trust him with your heart that's beating in your chest. Trust him. Just like you lay your head on the bed when you go to sleep at night and you trust him that he will wake you up in the morning with life and breath in your lungs. Yeah? Trust the Lord, thy God. So, just trust him. I pray you trust the Lord in this season for the remainder of the year. Whatever you're asking for, whatever your request is, I pray he comes speedingly. I pray the Lord answers speed, speedingly. I pray he comes speedingly. Speedingly, he will come. Trust him. Call on the Most High God. And in your time of wait, seek him every day. Seek him the minute you get. Seek him. Seek him. Seek him. Seek him. Seek him. Worship. Sing to him. He will give you songs. He give me songs. <laughs> he gives me songs. He will give you songs. He will put words in your mouth to sing. He will put prayers in your words to pray. All right? Seek him. And trust him. Trust him the very last hour. Trust him like your life depend on it. Just like how you depend on your man that break your heart, you depend on your parents that fail you, you depend on your friends that betray you, right? You depend on the drugs that wear off. It's not long term. That high must go. But the high of God is eternal. Yeah? He will spring forth a new thing in your life. Just trust him. I don't know who this is for. But Proverbs 3, 5, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. With all your heart, trust him and talk to him. Talk to him like he's your friend. He's right there. Even though you can't see him physically, but we can because he's in everything. He's in everything. No matter if you want to overlook it, he's in it. Talk to the Lord because he loves you. Talk to the Lord because he cares. Be with him. Let him stay with you. Let him commune with you. Let him be in your home. Usher him in. In whatever you're doing. You're walking. Talk to him. Don't care about who's walking past. Call his name. Lord, walk with me. Talk with me. When you're cooking, Lord, I need you. I need to feel you. Give me a give me a more divine relationship intimacy with you 
Let me hear you. Let me feel you. I don't want to know what it is not to feel you and to hear you every day. For me, it scared me. I don't want to ever not feel the Holy Spirit. I'm so accustomed to feeling the Holy Spirit every day. My ears pop something significant to know that to let, he allows me to know that he's with me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. He's my God and he's your God. He's our God. And despite what? Despite your season, your trust, your faith is what will work for you. Is it, it, it is what will, that is your weapon, your faith and your trust and your obedience. I can't forget about obedience because God is a God of cleanness and authority. Right? I was reading an Exodus, Exodus where he spoke to the children. He spoke to Moses when he, when he went up in Mount Sinai and he told Moses to come up. And to clean, let the, the children of Israel purge for three days. For two days and the third day they should come, right? And to wash themselves clean. And that tells me that God, he doesn't operate in anything unclean. Your environment got to be clean. You got to be clean. And when I say clean, clean from all sexual immortalities. Clean. Clean. Clean from self sinfulness. Clean your mind, your heart have to be clean. You have to be on, on one accord, right? Because you gotta have the the characteristic traits of God and who He is. It defines you. Who you are is the definition of who God is, right? So don't be corrupt, but be clean. He's a God of order, yeah. So you gotta be clean. You got to have a pure heart. You got to be righteous in your mind and thinking. You got to look out for your neighbors. You got to do charity. That's who he is. He wants you to be careful for others as well as how you want others to care for you. You got to do the due reward of giving. Yeah, but trust in the Lord, thy God. The Lord has done something miraculous. That's what it is. Miraculous. Miraculous for me. I ain't ready to give that testimony yet. Yeah? But I trust the Lord. I trust the Lord. I, Denise, trust the Lord. I have to trust the Lord. Because friend feels, my parents feel, you know, companion feel. Who do I have? God, the Lord, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, my comforter. That's who I talk to in my darkest time. Last night I went to bed and it's like I was just, I had this song on replay. I won't complain. I won't complain. For all things is working for my good. The pain, the tears, the hurt, the lack, the indiscrepancies, the joy, the good, the bad. All of it is a mixture working for my good. Yeah? And the reward comes from the Lord, my Lord, our Lord. Yeah, that's where my reward comes from. So... Despite you feel like God is not there, nobody's there, nobody cares. He cares. He's listening. He's listening. If you trust him with your heart and you surrender him like, Lord, I don't know what else to do. I don't know how I'm going to make a way. I don't see a way. But I'm going to give this to you. I'm going to give this to you, trusting you that you're going to deliver me. In time, you're gonna make a way, Lord. He's gonna make you dance, He's gonna make you prance. You're gonna want to jump and rail and pray. Um, the Lord give me a spirit when I pray, I can't contain myself. 
when I say contain myself, when the Holy Spirit move on me, I start, for, I start out soft. And then it's like I just escalate up. I escalate and I escalate and I escalate. And my mouth is just moving a mile a minute. Yeah? It's, it's just breathtaking. And it's like, I'm like, some people will find that maybe I can control it and they want me to control it. But I can't control that. I can't contain the Holy Spirit and how dynamic he works. Yeah? How dynamic he propels. I can't control the fire in me. I can't control it. I can't contain it. I can't contain it. <laughs> But trust the Lord thy God. Trust him, man. Trust him. May I tell you, trust him. Whoever you are that's listening to this, trust him. I'll give a testimony maybe next month in June. But God is just phenomenal. He is phenomenal. I ask God for the month of May, use strangers to bless me. For the month of May, I am asking, an, and I made a request, and he has fulfilled the request before May is over. We are at May 26, and every day there's something, and it comes with obedience. It comes with keeping your body holy, because he said, be he holy before I am holy, and it comes with aligning your conjunction, aligning your faith to his heart. Yeah? Obedience. Obedience. Keeping your body holy, not defiling your body, not sleeping around. And I get to understand why God honors marriage. Yeah? He honors marriage because it's a covenant. And... In that covenant, there's so much grace. And yes, you and your you and your husband and wife, they may buck heads, you know, because there are different seasons and times and things come up and afflictions. And you just got to have that spirit of grace as God give you a pace like grace to say, you know what, despite what, I ain't going to leave my wife. I ain't going to leave my husband. You know what? I'm going to be truthful and faithful to, the, to this man or to this woman that God has blessed me significantly with because God honors covenant, right? So keeping your body holy, I get it. I understand it, right? When you don't keep your body holy and then you're sleeping with somebody that's not your husband or not your wife, afflictions come and it does in various ways. Yeah, I'm not even know why I'm saying that, but I I felt the need to just share that. So obedience, keeping your body your, your body holy for God so he can work in you so you can hear profoundly from the most high God. Yeah? So you can see him in your life. Once you give God your body, you give God you the vessel and you say, "You know what, Lord, I'm not right as you say, Lord, use me as you wish. Use me. He will. But I, I also, God can't use a dirty thing. He can't use an unclean thing. Right? And a lot of people don't believe this. But he, he wants you to be clean. He wants you to be clean. He told Moses to wash. Let the, the children of Israel wash themselves. And not go beyond. Don't come up too far. Yeah, because you have to be clean to be in the presence of God. You have to be clean. For me, like, I feel like when I when I take a shower, I feel clean to come before the Lord. Not saying that he still wouldn't hear me as I'm praying or whatever, but it's just a different at, um, spectrum of respect then that I, I come before you in, in my in, in my wholesomeness, in my cleanness. And he is a God of um uh, he is an author of correction because if he if he dwell in filth, then I don't I don't think God don't dwell in filth. He doesn't dwell in filth. 
but he dwell in righteousness. He, de he dwell in cleanness. He inhabits in cleanness. And that's why he acts to be clean, to be holy, to be righteous, to be obedient, to have faith of a mustard seed. To have faith of a mustard seed. I really, I saw a mustard seed the other day and I said, wow, this thing is tiny. Yeah, but let your faith override your fear. Let your faith override your fear. Let your faith override what is telling you, no, it won't work. Yes, it will. Once you're talking to God, once you're worshiping God, once you're honoring him with your life, he has to honor you. He has to. So let your body, let you who you are, be a sacred ground for God. Take off your shoes because the ground you're standing on is Jesus, is holy ground. Okay? So be blessed, be magnified. Maybe I ranted, but God wants you to trust Him. He wants you to trust the process. Trust Him in all thy ways, trust Him in everything. Give Him your heart. Father, I'm gonna know, know what else to do, you know? I'm gonna know what, I don't know where else to go. Trust him, be rooted, be blessed, and be magnified. Proverbs 3, 5, trust the Lord. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust him and seek him. Let, his, uh, let your acknowledgement be unto him, right? As he give you wisdom and direction. And as he show up and show up like he always do, and he always will. Because he's not a father that he should lie, right? And his word shall not return unto him void. Speak back, his, give him back his words. The scriptures, give it back to him. Lord, you said this, right? Be rooted, be divine. Walk good until next time, right? Be blessed always. Much love. Much love in the Lord.